Hey, long time no see. You know, I'm not really a toy historian. I just play one on YouTube. And as someone who's made a living selling action figures since 2008, I've noticed a lot of toy history goes with each generation that moves on. In order to preserve toy history, I started the Figure Collections channel, where you can see in-depth views of action figures from the past and present. In my quest of preservation, I found several topics that are worthy of discussion, but don't have enough there for a full video. So with this, I'm starting a new series on FC called 3-Pack. 3-Pack will cover three different topics in one video that all share one common theme. For the first 3-Pack, three cartoons with toy lines that did not take off. The Ren and Stimpy show had quite the run in the 90s. Much more memorable than the Ren and Stimpy line of figures by Argo Toys, a Mattel company. These Nicktoon stars had a standard assortment of six, and one deluxe figure of each. Commander Ren and Space Cadet Stimpy, Army Ren and Boot Camp Stimpy, and Slap Happy Ren with a Bumperific Stimpy. An episode synopsis accompanied each figure's carding, along with some phrases you wouldn't expect to see on kids' toys. They were the first line of action figures based on a Nickelodeon show, but Ren and Stimpy was more adult-oriented. For instance, Bumperific has a much different connotation when you're an adult. Ren and Stimpy was very ahead of its time. Being marketed as kids' toys, the line didn't catch on. And Ren and Stimpy wouldn't have another bump of figures until Palisades in 2004. Are any TV shows more beloved than King of the Hill? The answer? No. The Hill family would first be seen in figure form in 2002, at San Diego's Comic Con event. Attendees would have run into Hank, Peggy, Dale, and Bill. This wave of figures by Toycom included a buildable fence, probably because a buildable propane tank would have been too dangerous for kids. They're dangerous! The second wave included Bobby with Ladybird, Boomhauer, and Luann. This six and a half inch King of the Hill line had a third series planned but the toy line didn't have enough success to see it continue. I know the Hills weren't the most cheerful family, but I have to think the line might have done a little better if the figures looked at least a tad happier. To date, this is the most complete roster of King of the Hill figures. Family Guy's popularity has seen ebbs and flows over the last couple decades. A lot of toy collectors are aware of the Family Guy figure line by Mezco, but did you know they also had a line of figures by Playmates Toys? Unlike Mezco's line, Playmates Toys' Family Guy line was planned to be built around electronic interactive environments. Sound familiar? Clean up this mess! I thought I need to make over like there's no freaking tomorrow! Playmates reused the same concept from the Simpsons' World of Springfield line, uh -oh. hoping that the talking features would be enough to entice collectors to give them a try. Lois packed with the Griffin living room, and figures that would work with the playset made up the first assortment. Stewie, Peter, Brian, Cleveland, Quagmire, and Halloween Stewie. Even with some of the most popular animated stars in the first series, Playmates Family Guy line was not successful enough to continue. Because of the cancellation, figures of Death, Chris, Meg, and Tuxedo Brian were unreleased. Also, the Drunken Clam playset would forever be in limbo. And there it is, three iconic cartoons with three less than iconic toy lines. What do you think? Should these have been more successful than they actually were? If you have an idea for a three pack or any other videos on the channel, let us know in the comments. As always, you can support FC by grabbing yourself a deal from one of our shops. 
Also check out figurecollections.com for a completely free searchable figure database with over 40,000 figures.